This is Tom from TPC Racing. This video is to demonstrate how to adjust the uh, ride height on the Tractive DDA coilover. Let's start with uh, the tools that we need. Uh, we'll start with the uh, Tractive Toolkit. This is the toolkit that comes with the Tractive DDA shocks. In the toolkit, you'll find a number of bits that are necessary to make the changes. And uh, here is the uh, driver for the bits. We'll put this down for a moment. Other items we will need is a can of WD-40 or something equivalent, shop towel, paint marker, some type of measuring device. Um, in this case, we're going to, for the uh, demonstration purpose of the video, we're just going to use a uh, tape measure, but uh, usually I do use uh, a dial caliper for a more precise adjustment. But for the demonstration purpose of this video, this will work just fine. And I also like to have a uh, two and a half millimeter Allen key just as backup. You'll see why in a little bit later. The area that we're working on is clean. In this case, this is a newly installed shock, so uh, we don't have to clean it. So now we're going to measure the distance of the exposed threads underneath the perch. So we have 47 millimeters here. Let's say we want to increase the distance to 50 millimeters from the 47, which means that we'll be raising the ride height by 3 millimeters or 1 eighth of an inch. We would need to turn the perch up by two turns. This is a uh, 1.5 millimeter thread pitch on the tractive shock, so that means each turn that we make would be 1.5 millimeters. So for this exercise, if we're going from 47 to 50 millimeters, we would need to turn the perch two complete turns. So before we get started turning it, we want to make sure that uh, this is nicely lubricated. So we'll take the WD-40, so let's put a shot here and a shot here. Wipe off the excess. And then we want to put a reference mark here, right here, and here. So this will give us a rough indication of one complete turn. So next thing is to get the 2.5 millimeter bit from the tractive toolkit, insert it into the tractive driver, loosen up the set screw, And then we'll swap bits to the drive pin. So with the drive pin bit and the uh, driver here, that gives us a lot of leverage actually. That will give us the ability to turn this. So I'm working it back and forth just to work the uh, WD-40 in. So uh, we're not damaging the threads as we turn this. So we're gonna go two complete turns. So this is where we started. You can see the, in, the uh, lineup points here and here. Here we go. It's turning very smoothly. This is one complete turn. And here comes the second turn. Okay, we have it lined up exactly. So after that, we want to measure it just to make sure that we're at the height that we want, or the distance that we want. Yes, that shows exactly 50 millimeters. So from here, we'll go back to the uh, attractive 2.5 millimeter bit to tighten the set screw here. On the inside of the set screw, there's actually a piece of rubber. It's a rubber tip. So as we tighten this, we could do this a great number of times. It's not damaging the threads on the shock. So that's uh, actually a very good idea by the tractor engineers. So going back to um, earlier with the uh, 2.5 millimeter Allen key, what I like to do is just keep the key around and just give it a final snug here. This 
design doesn't require uh, much force, so you don't have to tighten it so much that you break the key off. This is all you need. When the key itself flexes, that's about all the torque that's required to hold this setup. So that's it. It's a pretty easy setup. There's no need for spanner wrenches. This is a supplement to the first video. So another reason why I keep a spare 2.5mm Allen key is if I want to keep playing with the ride height or to, uh, for corner balancing, you'll be doing this a number of times. So with the additional Allen key, I can keep doing this without having to swap bits. So it just makes it more convenient.